The images you are about to see are just stunning. The people, inspirational. We're about to reveal Australia's secret Garden of Eden, where some heroic Aussies are bringing our most precious and endangered wildlife back from the brink. It sits on the edge of Lake Eyre, a former cattle station called Kalamurna, and it's our best hope of reversing Australia's shameful record of mammal extinctions, the worst in the world. Here's Mike Munro with a remarkable experiment and a journey into a great land. This is the biggest privately owned protected piece of land in the nation. Kalamurna is 7,000 square kilometres huge. In the heart of Australia, it sits along the northern edge of Lake Eyre. Now almost full to the brim for the first time in a generation. Millions of cubic litres of water are still surging into the lake air. But this is one of the driest parts of the entire country, smack bang in the middle of two deserts, the Simpson and the Tarare. And yet the Warburton River, which is feeding lake air, is running at almost six metres deep. And bringing with it, as it marches south, is an explosion of wildlife and flora. A few years ago, all of this was dry. Now you've got beautiful vegetation. The lignum's thickened up. You're getting the coolabars recruiting. You've got complex, rich habitat. Perfect for the wildlife. Beautiful and spectacular. Desert on one side, desert on the other, and that oasis in the middle. But to sustain that, we're going to have to manage this country really well over the next few years and make the most of the water that we have. That's right. If we want to lock in the benefits of the, the ecological boom that these waters have, have brought us, we're going to have to control the feral animals for a start. Atticus Fleming is not only vet and conservationist for the Australian Wildlife Conservancy, but also chief executive of its 22 properties around Australia, including Kalamurna. Right now, it's as full as it's been for 40 years. Is that right? So it's pretty amazing. He and his small team have a single-minded goal, to rebuild Australia's native wildlife and flora. Well, I think it's important for all Australians to understand there's a crisis, that we're losing our wildlife. So if people want their children and their grandchildren to be able to see a bilby, to see the grass wrens here at Kalamurna, to see the bird life that we've seen along the river, if we want that to be sustained, if we want the next generation to be able to enjoy that, we've got to act now. Look at this. It's almost surreal, isn't it? It's, it's, it's beautiful and it's uh, just starting to come to life. And we've seen two or three species of duck here this morning, Australian shell duck. Are these uh, down here? At places like Kalamurna, we're removing feral animals. In the last 12 months, we've removed over 300 camels. So that's a very basic practical example. Donkeys too. And donkeys too. In our, at our Western New South Wales property, we've created the largest fox and cat free area on mainland Australia. An island off the West Australian coast, we've removed all of the cats. That's the third largest island in the world from which cats have been eradicated. This is like the global epicenter of mammal extinctions. So our mission is to save Australia's wildlife. Kalamurna is a huge living experiment. If it succeeds, it'll not only save species on the edge of extinction, but see them thrive once again. Dotted around the property are motion-sensitive cameras recording wildlife activity. And as dusk turns to night, harmless traps, which have been set during the day, are checked by his team. It's a virtual menagerie up here. Yeah, a lot of activity at night. 
So what do we got here, guys? This is a dusky hoppy mouse. It's one of the species we have here on Kalamata. And how endangered? It's on the threatened species list. So what do you do now? We're going to release it. Oh, he's going right up my trouser leg. <laughs> there he goes over here. The infrared motion cameras monitor numbers at night. Mind you, some like the dingo are less than impressed by man invading their nightlife. Atticus Fleming not only relies on the generosity of everyday Aussies to help fund the AWC, but wealthy philanthropists like Jill and Michael Hawker. Helping to buy Calamurna has protected it for all Australians. Do you have to pinch yourself? Well, you're sitting in the middle of the Simpson Desert and you're sitting on a river. I find that extraordinary. I think places like this around the world are going to become incredibly rare. And the global population expected to go from six to nine billion. This is one of the few places in the world where you can still grab a large chunk of land and do something with it. It's not only all the water and getting rid of the ferals that's making a difference to this magnificent part of Australia. It's also efficient fire management and the fact that there's no grazing whatsoever on this 670,000 hectare property that's allowing wildflowers to blossom as well as the iconic coolabar tree. Here, Matt, here's a sign that things are changing. Now that we've removed the cattle and getting on top of the feral herbivores, it's, you can see it's sprouting. So for the first time in a generation, we're really getting coolabar recruitment through here. So it's like a bonsai coolabar. <laughs> it is, it is. I feel like a schooner. One of the key changes we've made here is to remove cattle. So this is the only stretch of the Warburton River, the most important river associated with Lake Eyre, and this is the only stretch of the river that doesn't have cattle grazing. And that's vitally important because it means the vegetation can really flourish once you get the rains and the floodwaters. And having this much success encourages more wealthy conservationists to chip in with big donations. We've got apples, today's papers, some wine, <laughs> bread rolls and some cheese. <laughs> People like the charming 85-year-old Bailu Meyer from the retail giant. We Australians are looking after a huge continent. There are very few of us. I think we've got a responsibility to, to, to look after it, care for it and conserve it. And, and preserve the rare species that are on it. The only way to save Australia's wildlife is to take action on the ground. Get rid of feral animals, get the fire management right, get rid of the weeds. And all of that needs to be guided by really good practical science. And now more than ever, because we have the water. The beauty of these floodwaters and the rain is that it gives us time. So the birds are here in great numbers. We know the small mammal numbers will increase as well, but we know in the long term the trend is down. This is just giving us a few years to get the management right so that we can save those species that are still here. When you walk out here, you realise just what a beautiful, but fragile land it is, which is why the work of Atticus and his team is worth supporting and celebrating. It's pretty amazing. And those spectacular pictures were shot by Matt Koopmans and Nathan Tomlinson. And if you'd like to help the Australian Wildlife Conservancy, the details are on our website.